In this video, we're going to continue looking at the characteristics of the sampling distribution of the sample mean, specifically when sampling from the uniform distribution. So suppose that the underlying distribution of the random variable is the uniform distribution, then we're able to calculate the population mean, which will be A plus B over 2, and the population standard deviation, which is the square root of b minus a squared divided by 12, keeping in mind that a is the lower limit and b is the upper limit. So if we take a sample that is large enough, such that our sample size is at least 30, then the sampling distribution of the sample average will be approximately normal and the mean will be equal to mu x bar, which is going to be equivalent to the population mean of x. And the standard deviation sigma x bar is going to be equal to sigma x over the square root of x, where sigma x is the same as the standard deviation of the random variable from the uniform population. Now, in this example, suppose that the delivery time of pizzas has a uniform distribution over the interval 20 to 40 minutes. So we can define x as the delivery time of a pizza in minutes. And the probability density function of x is 1 over 40 minus 20. And this gives us 1 over 20, which is equivalent to 0.05. So a sketch of the probability density function looks like a rectangle and the x-axis, the range of values go from 20 to 40. And our function, the probability density function value is 0 0.05. So we can calculate the average delivery time of a pizza using our formula. So this will be A plus B over 2. And we find that the average is 30. So this is the population average. Now the variance of the delivery time of the pizza, sigma squared, is b minus a squared divided by 12. And when we plug in our values of b and a, we find that the variance is 33.3 recurring. So from the variance, the standard deviation is obtained by taking the square root of 33.3 and we find that the standard deviation sigma x is 5.7735. Now let's define x as the delivery time of a pizza in minutes. So the probability that it will take between 28 and 32 minutes to deliver a pizza, this is represented on the graph as the shaded area where the x values are from 28 to 32 and the height of the area is going to remain the same at 0.05. So this is the probability that x is between 28 and 32 minutes. And this is calculated as the change in x multiplied by the probability density function. So the change in x is 32 minus 28. And we multiply this by 0.05, which gives us a final answer of 0.2. So let x bar def be defined as the average delivery time of 36 pizzas. And now we're interested in finding the sampling distribution of x bar. So the first thing we need to do is we need to check if the sample size, which in this case is 36 pizzas, is going to be large enough. And in this case, 36 is greater than 30, so our sample is definitely large enough. So now we can apply the central limit theorem. And this will mean that the sample average x bar has an approximate, which is denoted by the squiggly line with a dot at the top. And it has an approximate normal distribution with a mean mu x bar, which is equal to the population mean of x and a variance of sigma squared x bar. So mu x bar which we've said is the population mean of x, we found it as 30, and sigma x bar is sigma x over the square root of n, where sigma x is the population standard deviation, 
and this was calculated as 5.7735. So we divide it by the square root of our sample size and we end up with sigma x bar equal to 0 0.962. Now let's calculate the probability that x bar is between 28 and 32 minutes, keeping in mind that x bar has an approximate normal distribution with a mean of 30 and a variance of 0 0.962 squared. So the probability that x bar is between 28 and 32, we are going to standardize by taking away the mean of 30 on all sides and dividing by the standard deviation of x bar of 0 0.962. And we end up with the probability of z between minus 2.08 and positive 2.08. And we can rewrite it as the probability of z less than 2.08 minus the probability of z less than minus 2.08. So from the positive z tables, our probability is 0 0.9812 for the larger area. And for the lesser area, the probability is 0 0.0188. So the difference between the two gives us a final answer of 0 0.9624. What is the probability that X bar is between 28 and 32 minutes? So starting off with our probability statement, this will be the probability that X bar is between 28 and 32 minutes. And we can rewrite it as the probability that x bar is less than 32 minus the probability that x bar is less than 28. So we can make use of our inbuilt Excel functions and we're going to use the norm.dist function. And this is because our probability statement is in terms of our random variable x bar. So this will be equal norm.dist and in the brackets it will be 32 which is the value of x bar, the larger value, 30 which is the mean of x bar, 0 0.962 which is the standard deviation of x bar and our cumulative statement true since we are looking for the area to the left of 32 minus norm.dist and in the brackets it's 28 which is the value of x bar 30 which is the mean 0 0.962 which is the standard deviation of x bar and true which is the cumulative statement since once more we want the area to the left of 28. So when we find the difference between the two values our final probability is 0. 9623 and as you can see this value is similar to the one we just calculated only that the fourth decimal place in this case is 3 and not 4 as we've seen in the previous statement in the previous example and this is just because of the accuracy that we get from using our excel functions so in general when we make use of the norm.dist function the first entry is your value of x bar for which you want to find the area to the left of it. Then your second entry is mu x bar which is the mean of x bar and this is equal to the mean of the population. Then you have sigma x bar which is the standard deviation of x bar. And finally we have our cumulative statement which will be true since we're interested in calculating the area to the left of x bar. Now in the next video, we're going to look at how to apply the characteristics of the sampling distribution of the sample proportion.